Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. Each week the developers of Eve Echoes take four questions posed by you, the community, respond to those questions and then post the answers to the official Eve Echoes Twitter account and Facebook page. It's also posted somewhere in-game in your ship's AI in the deepest, darkest recesses of the parts of the game that no one ever visits. And no, I'm not talking about Delve. Anyway, I've also been asked why I haven't done the April Fool's Day joke this year, and there are three reasons. Firstly, without getting too political, I think there's enough misinformation and lying going on on the internet as it is. Secondly, I couldn't think of anything remotely funny. The closest thing I had was some prank that I was going to announce that I was uh, showing support for some, a new line of NFTs or a cryptocurrency, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Um, I couldn't even joke about that. That's how much I absolutely abhor that stuff. Um, and thirdly, because simply put, one of the questions in here feels like a bit of a sort of April Fool's Day joke anyway, we'll get to that in time. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit like, subscribe, check me out on Patreon as well if you want to go the extra mile to help supporting this channel. Otherwise, let's jump right in to this week's developer Q&A. This is the week of the 23rd to the 29th of March. We are so close now to this April balance patch. I can almost smell the numbers. I'm really excited. Anyway, let's jump right in and take a look. First question, are there plans to increase corporation and alliance sizes? Melos responds, the sizes of alliance and corporation are set through data analysis of both PC and mobile games. Thus, there is no plan to modify them in the short term. And I'm going to be completely honest here. I really don't see a need to. I think actually increasing the size would be a bad thing right now, because what we're trying to do is actually get more players to go to war against each other, more corporations to go to war, more alliances to go to war, that kind of thing. This is why sovereignty is put on a corporation level rather than alliance level, because you need to build more of these structures. Building more structures means you spread out over a wider area of space, which means more possibility for conflict. If you have corporations that can contain 1,000 players each and alliances that can contain 50 corporations, well, that's 50,000 people in one alliance, at which point you've got the typical what they call blue donut. That ring of everyone being friendly, no fighting, no PvP, no wars. By keeping the corporations and alliances small, you kind of force people into these situations where players are going to be antagonistic to each other. That is, by design, increasing the sizes of the friendship groups ultimately just it, it reduces the possibility for conflict. Normally I'd say it's a good thing, but in Echoes, yeah, no, we need that conflict. Next up, Carrier and Dreadnoughts have been out since November. Only one event for their nanocore since then. Will you be introducing any nanocores to these ships in the Concord store or future events? Preferably through Concord, so it's accessible to all players. And absolutely agree at that. Absolutely agree. That key point there, accessible to all players. Now, admittedly, if you're running around in a capital ship like a Dreadnought or a Carrier, you're not the all players. You're the 1%, not the 99%. These are very niche ships. Not many people are flying them at all. Most of those people, I'm not going to say all, but most of those people fall into the will spend real money demographic. If you're in a carrier or a dreadnought, chances are you're someone who is willing to drop actual money on the game. Not everyone by any stretch of the imagination, but that is the demographic that NetEase sees that at. Now, Mike Lee's response is slightly troubling, but this is not the April Fool's one. As you mentioned, it's been too long since we had something like the Neon Rain event. No, it hasn't. Quite frankly, if we don't have another Neon event, uh, neon Rain event again for a long time, I will be happy. That wasn't an event. That was just a sale. Like, you, you don't sit there and, like, the, the, the shops announce a sale as the latest social event. No, it's not. It's just a sale. An event is something like the Crimson Harvest that had players grouping up together to clear these new special anomalies so that they could get supremely awesome skins and unlock all of the new modules and things like that. That was an event. It gave you a reason to log in and actually do something, to do content. The Neon Rain event had literally no event in it. It was not any, you just, you didn't have anything to do when you logged in other than swipe the credit card. So, no, I disagree. I don't think we need another Neon Rain event. I think we need more content-based events that may include things that the Neon Rain event had. I think having those big sales for the top spenders and that is 
Yeah, okay, it's necessary, it's going to help raise funding for the game. However, making your events purely about buying nanocores and stuff, no, that's not fun, it's not exciting, can we please move away from that? We will release a new series of capital nanocores in the near future, stay tuned. Now that second bit though, is good news. Getting new capital nanocores, I'm all for. If it were up to me, and I've talked about this at length in the CC chat on the official Evecos Discord, I've talked about it at length with other people as well, it's an idea I've bounced off numerous people. If it were up to me, I would have it so that every new season of the Concord Pass comes with half the nanocores it currently does, in and, and a lot more variety. There would be no Hurricane Core in the next pass, because as much as I adore the Hurricane, seriously, it's my favourite ship in Echoes, as much as I adore the Hurricane, there are too many cores for it, and getting a new core every pass is pointless. But what we should do is next pass has cores for, say, four frigates, four destroyers, four cruisers, four battle cruisers, four battleships, and maybe some of the industrials. Make those cores unique and actually interesting, but keep this season's cores on sale in the store. Now, when that season ends, this season's cores disappear. This current season that's just ended, those cores now move into the store, and the Concord Pass gets a new select line of nano cores. Again, four of each variety. So you don't have many new nano cores coming in each pass, but you can buy the previous season's nano cores in the store. This means that most players will have an option available to them at all times. The flooding of the game with nano cores is not good. Remember the whole thing of you can build nano cores yourself. Has anyone ever done that? Because the amount of materials it takes to make a standard NCO core are absolutely insane when you can just wait until your ship gets an inevitable core in the next Concorde Pass and you just save up and buy it that way. What's the point in reverse engineering nano cores if the game is just going to give us better ones constantly? all the freaking time. Secondly as well, please, please make nanocores bind on a use. A purple nanocore, when you fit it to a ship, it locks to your account. But before then, you can trade it. I'm sitting on a Prophecy Death Wish. I'm never going to fly a Prophecy seriously on live. I can't even trade it to my alts. So if, like, my small ship character happens to get the nanocore for, say, the pur a purple hurricane nanocore, I can't pass it to my hurricane main. How messed up is that? Anyway, let's move on because nanocores make me angry at the moment. Question number three. After building a ship, will we ever be able to scroll down on the ship's info page and see the builder of the ship, kind of like the signature of a painting? Yeah, this would be amazing. I would love to see this. In World of Warcraft, off the top of my head, if you have an item, you can scroll right down on it in a little triangular brackets. It's got a made by, and it tells you which player made that item. For me, you would see that half of my hangar is made by Yatsuki. Um, or made by Raman, those are my two main shipbuilders currently. Um, and I think that's really, really cool. That's a really personal element to the game. It's an incentive to keep using the same industrial uh, shipbuilder. It's just, it's a nice little touch to actually have these collections basically made by the same player or just to know who actually built it. For me as well, this, it, when I say personal touch, EVE is renowned for this. Like, if you look in EVE Online, there is a cemetery for literal dead players there, for crying out loud. Players who play EVE Online and have passed away have an actual monument in Malaya where they can have a jet can put there with their name on it. And that's personal. It's something really quite powerful. And little personal touches like that are what make an MMORPG great. So I would love to see this kind of stuff in the game. Unfortunately, Paulin says, Thank you very much for your suggestion. We wouldn't consider adding this to our development plan for now. And that's a shame. I would really like to see that. Yes, I know industry needs bigger fixes and bigger changes. There's a lot more that needs to be done in an actual meaningful way. But at the same token, that's just a really nice little touch that I would like to see added to the game. Oh boy, here it comes, the question. I think faction battleships need more range of electronic modules. For example, the Vindicator needs more longer web and warp disruptor. The Barguest needs more longer warp scrambler and disruptor. It's impossible that a frigate, cruiser or a battleship have the same range of electronic module. Now, I'm, I'm going to tackle this piece by piece, but the first bit I really want to get it's impossible that the frigate, cruiser, and battleship have the same range of electronic module. It's a module. 
The word module, as in modular, can be taken off one thing and put onto another. If you have a stasis webifier, a predator stasis webifier, for example, you take a predator stasis webifier off a frigate and put it on a cruiser. Does the range change? For the most part, no, it does not. If I take a stasis webifier off like that, cruiser and put it onto a battleship does the range change no because it's the same freaking module right are you with me so far this means that certain hulls can have certain bonuses right we're still with me on this so if you put a stasis webifier on something like a uh, like like an interceptor it gets bonuses to it because the ship has systems in it that empower that module that's not every flipping battleship in the game that is specific ship types. And you know what? If you think a Vindicator needs longer webs, I've got two things to say to you. One, no the frickin' hell it doesn't. It should not have the additional range bonus that it even has. The fact that Serpentis ships get strong webs and long webs is a big problem with why the Serpentis ships are just so ridiculous in the first place. They do not need the additional range. If a Vindicator had a 15 kilometer range web that slows you down by uh, to 5% of your current speed, which is basically what it does, you don't need the additional range. There needs to be some kind of counterplay. I think it's kind of interesting. I think uh, Voxel actually said it quite interestingly on the official Discord when we first got this, uh, this through as text this morning. He was like, I already have a nearly I win button. Please will you give me an actual AFK I win button? And fortunately the developers here say no, but we'll come to that in a moment. The second part is, you know what a Vindicator with longer range webs is called? The bar, uh, the Balgorn. The Balgorn is, if you want long, we long range webs, you fly a Balgorn. If you want strong webs, you fly a Vindicator. Like, if you're just going to make the Vindicator freaking amazing at everything, what is the point in having any other ship in the game? If you make one ship so ridiculously powerful compared to everything else, then naturally that's what people are going to fly, right? At which point, when you go into your beloved faction war games or whatever, everyone's flying a Vindicator. Oh wait, that's what was already happening. The Vindicator is an amazing ship. I don't think it necessarily needs any severe nerfs, but I do think it doesn't need that web range bonus. The fact that it's got the web strength is what makes it unique, and giving it that web range bonus encroaches on the Balgorn's territory. If you want long range webs, you go for a Balgorn, if it's a battleship that you want it on. If you want proper tackle, like here you can see the long range warp scrambler and disruptor here on the Barguest, go for an interceptor with the core. That's why these ships exist. Point ultimately to make as well, other than just, oh, let's make one ship ridiculously powerful over absolutely everything else, therefore staling the game into, you know, like just uh, stagnating the game, that's the word I'm looking for, stagnating the game completely so that everyone basically aims to fly one ship. Ultimately, beyond even that, you just, you, 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 frigates are already in a bad enough place when it comes to fighting battleships. There is no reason that a battleship should ever be able to hit like an interceptor, ever. There's no reason to, for the, the large weapons to have the extreme tracking that they actually do have. Medium weapons used to have a lot lower tracking than they currently do. Back in the open beta, I remember, there's, I should have a video on it here somewhere, I'll see if I can find the link for it, of upgrading to your first cruiser and I was flying a stabber, and at that point in time I remember going, I can't actually hit anything with this stabber because you needed webs for medium turrets to hit. Now, you don't need webs for medium turrets to hit. You can go into PvE and you can shoot at everything. I'm not talking PvP here, I'm talking PvE. In PvE, you don't need webs. You are quite capable with medium weapons of hitting absolutely everything. Webs make it easier, but you can still hit. Larges should never be hitting something without webs, as long as there is any form of angular velocity going on there. Just, this to me is an insane question. Tell me that you don't understand game design or balance without saying, I don't understand game design or balance. You want battleships to do everything. You want faction battleships to do everything perfectly. Then what is the point in, tell me, what is the point in any other ship in the game if one ship can do everything? If your Vindicator, if your Vindicator can do absolutely everything combat wise, what is the point in ever flying anything else? Every player hits tech level 7 or tech level 8, tech level 8, sorry, when they can start training battleship skills. They start training into all of the skills needed to fly a Vindicator. They buy a Vindicator. They are set. That's not a sandbox game anymore. That's Eve Echo's Vindicator edition.
I hate that I still have to come up with this dumb stuff. And some people were saying in the CC chat, oh, this is clearly a troll question. But I don't think it is. I don't actually think it is that it's impossible that a frigate cruise on battleship have the same range of electronic module. To me, is telling that people just don't understand the concept of this is real life, this is a video game. They are separate things. Like, look, you can sit there and say that, you know, oh yeah, a battleship obviously has longer range guns than a frigate does. Yeah, it does. And in real life, that makes sense because they are genuinely bigger guns. But if you take a sonar, a radar dish off a battleship and installed it onto a frigate or a cruiser, it's still the same sonar, right? It still has the same range. It's not going to be doing anything different unless you take it off a particular ship and put it onto something else that has a load of signal amplifiers and boosters on it. At which point, there you do have that range. But even then, just this whole thing of, oh, in real life, a battleship's better, so... This just makes me angry. It just makes me angry that people are insistent that battleships should be able to do everything. But then these are the same people who, a few weeks later, are like, I'm getting bored of the game now. I'm really bored of the game. Like, There's nothing to do. It's because, yeah, you made your one ship so ridiculously powerful. You found one thing that you could do really, really well. I'm looking at you, High Sec Islands. You never engaged with half of the game, and then you complain that it's boring. And instead of trying to fix yourself and your crappy playstyle, you look to everyone else and go, oh, I want to make the game worse for them to make it better for me. No, screw yourself and go off with that kind of attitude. I do not want you in this game. That is more damaging to the game than losing a couple of people from the community who have these beliefs would be. Fortunately, Wilson says we wouldn't increase the range for Vindicator and Bargess because we don't want to see battleships being that powerful. Battleships are already the be-all, end-all pretty much of the game as it is. If, in, if the interceptors get nerfed, which they're going to, and nothing else is put in their place, then frigate pilots are practically dead as it is. Now you're saying you want more? Like, for crying out loud, it, she said, it would be very frustrating if frigates have no resistance against the Vindicator and Barghest. I agree, so get rid of the additional range to the webs on the uh, on the uh, Vindicator anyway. It doesn't need it, it shouldn't have it. That is the Balgorn's territory, that is not what the Vindicator is supposed to do. And it just irks me so much that people just want this one ship. They've attached themselves to one ship and they want it to be the very best at everything. The Hurricane is my favourite ship and I love it to pieces. And yeah, I would love a Tech 10 variant of the Hurricane, the Hurricane Fleet issue. I would love that so that I can do T10 content a little bit easier. But should that be able to rip apart a battleship? No. No, should it just be able to rip apart any cruiser that comes uh, any cruiser that comes in their past? Yeah. Should it be able to take out any frigate? No. Should the Hurricane uh, be excellent at exploration? No. Should we strap mining to the hurricane as well because that's the next step from here that you want the vindicator to be good at everything well what happens if one day you decide that actually i don't want to be a combat pilot today i want to go mining why doesn't my vindicator have mining lasers yeah okay i know i'm getting a bit pedantic now i'm getting a bit over the top and sensational i'm tired i'm tired of this kind of questioning um but it's nice to see that wilson says that no they don't want battleships to be as ridiculously overpowered as that Anyway, we're coming to 18 minutes from this video. I'm getting angry at this question being on screen, so I'm going to move that off to the side and put that nice picture of the... I, I thought it was a Vindicator, actually, I put on there. It's actually a Megatron. Um, oh, well. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little unfair, but to me, that's a key problem. Um, when people sit there and say, oh, I want this thing, I want that thing, and they don't know why they want it, they just want the thing that they've got to be better. Like, before we finish this one there it's not oh i think that it needs better skills because it's not performing well enough that's not what they're saying they're saying i want it to have better skills and better abilities because i just feel that it should have better skills and better abilities there's no evidence behind this no one is saying oh you know the vindicator needs longer range uh, webs and warp disruptor because it's not able to fulfill its role of kicking the ever-living snot out of everything because it does it already does. It doesn't need buffing. The bar guest needs longer range warp scrambler and disruptors because it's not able to tackle properly. No, it, it does fine. It does fine with these things. This isn't someone complaining that their ship doesn't work. This is someone complaining that their ship works absolutely fine and they want more. And I am so against that. 
Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. He says putting his phone down over there. Let me know your thoughts and uh, opinions in the comment section down below. What do you think? What questions would you like to ask the developers? Let me know in the comment section down below. Or better yet, click in the link in the description that will take you through to the Google document where you can actually ask those questions. Remember, anyone who's chosen wins a month of Basic Omega. Also, today being Friday, I'm about to choose two people on my Discord and one person on my YouTube comment section to each win a month of Combo Omega as well. Check out my video on how that works, linked in the description below as well, if you want to win a month of Combo Omega. Anyway, folks, thank you for paying attention to this one right the way through to the end. Thank you for listening to me rant away. Let me know how you get on with all of this. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.